Today, we're going in depth about the macronutrient fat. There are four macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, and also alcohol sugar. The first three are the ones we commonly talk about. I have a video series about protein, everything you need to know. If you have not seen that video, you should go watch it. I truly believe protein is the most important macronutrient. And the carb video is also very interesting because we get into it as an energy source and also talk about the value of fiber. Today, we're talking about fat and how it pertains to your hormones and how it pertains to your lipids, meaning your cholesterol and your triglycerides. Fat is the most calorically dense macronutrient. It has nine calories per gram. Compare that to protein and carbohydrates, they each have four calories per gram. This makes it very important to properly portion fat in your diet because in a lot of cases, it's spreadable, it's also in liquid, so it can very easily be underestimated. Within fats, there are four categories, monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, saturated fats, and trans fats. The first three all have nutritional value. The latter, trans fats, you should eliminate or at least greatly reduce in your diet. It has no nutritional value. I wanna start off today talking about polyunsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fats have a value in your diet for both cardiovascular health and brain function. They help prevent heart disease and they also reduce your risk for dementia. We talk about omega-3s all the time and how important it is to supplement for them. And omega-6s also have a vital role to just everyday life and preventing diseases of aging. Next, we're gonna talk about monounsaturated fats, which I believe of the four types of fats is the single most important. And the reason why is it is so powerful when it comes to cholesterol. I'm gonna list a couple of health markers which you may not have ever heard of, and that's okay. But going forward, you wanna make sure that you get tested when you get your lab work for these health markers. Apolipid proteins, extremely important, and low density lipoprotein. You wanna be looking at these health markers because they are key indicators of heart disease, of having a heart attack, of having stroke, of having high blood pressure. And what we can use to help combat that besides fiber, which we covered in the carbohydrate video, is also monounsaturated fats. I'm gonna go over a couple of sources of them. Obviously there are more. My particular favorite, peanut butter. Macadamia nuts, incredibly high in monounsaturated fats, avocados, sesame seed oil, and olives. I have peanut butter, avocado, and olive oils in my diet every single day. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have kind of like this unhealthy relationship or used to have this unhealthy relationship with peanut butter. In the past, I would keep peanut butter in my house and I would find myself binging on it at night. Through the years of just learning better habits, I no longer have that issue. We have peanut butter stocked at all times, in part because I moved in with my girlfriend, we bought a house, so I had to be a big boy and grow up. And with kids on the way, even more vital that I get my act together. The reason I highlight any of that for you is because even though these are healthy fats, and even though they're so powerful to help fight against heart disease, if you are eating too much of them, you will still put fat on your body. You will still have Oedipus tissue. And the reality is being overweight is highly correlated with cardiovascular disease. Even though these are powerful tools that will help fight heart disease, the reality is if you eat too much of them, you're still gonna be overweight. You're still gonna be more likely to have fat. Lastly, saturated fat, which I truly believe has gone from being villainized to glorified. And I think we have to keep it all in perspective. Examples of saturated fat, animal protein, which is a huge part of my diet. Depending on the cut of meat, you can go from very fatty, high in saturated fat to less fat. In front of me, this is Wagyu ground beef. This is very fatty. I have whole dairy. You can also obviously get low fat dairy, but this is whole milk dairy. This is gonna be high in saturated fat and coconut oil, also butter or lard. Uh, the thing with saturated fat is that it went from being villainized, everybody thought it was horrible, and we have to get rid of it, which is not true. And now we have glorified it. The reality is saturated fat should be somewhere around 10% of your total daily calories. I don't know of anything. I mean, we're talking about even like vitamin C, magnesium, any of these things that too much of or an unlimited amount of is a good thing. Everything is intended to be in moderation. Everything I've learned about nature, like if you think about even like gazelles as they run through Africa, right? They're running away from these hyenas, right? And they're running and they jump through the water. The first one's there, the fastest, they're meeting the crocodiles in the water. 
That's just the reality. And the ones in the back, they're getting ate up by the hyenas and the lions. So mother nature truly favors moderation. Very tall people, very short people do not live as long as average height people. Too much magnesium is a bad thing. Too little magnesium is a bad thing. You want the right amount of magnesium. And the same is true with saturated fat. So you've heard my TED talk. Let me explain to you what I think you should be having or what I know you should be having, which is 10% of your daily calories should be coming from saturated fat. That is going to power your hormones, but that is also going to prevent your lipids from getting out of whack. You need some saturated fat for hormones, but that number should be around 10% and it should be around one third of your total intake of fat. But is it really necessary to track the exact amount of grams of fat you're intaking every single day? The answer is it depends. Uh, if you've watched my series on macronutrients, in particular protein, everything you need to know, then you're aware that you only need to track calories and protein to get in incredible shape, to lose weight, or to even get totally ripped. However, if my testosterone was low, the first thing I would be looking at is making sure that I'm exercising, making sure that my body fat is under 20%, and making sure that I'm getting adequate saturated fat and omega-6s in my diet. So if there's an issue, well then you need to think, start thinking through and looking at the particulars of what you're doing. It's the same thing I always tell people. People are like, do I need to track my calories? If you're in great shape, you don't need to. If you like what you see in the mirror, you don't need to track your calories. But if you don't like what you see, then you need to do something about it. It's the same thing is true with finances. Like if you're struggling to pay your bills, look, you gotta come up with a plan. And the same is true. If you're low in testosterone, then you need to do something. The same is true if you have high cholesterol. If you have high cholesterol, the opposite is true. Now you need to really watch your saturated fat intake for the opposite reason. You make sure that you're limiting how much you have and you need to be making sure that you're getting plenty of monounsaturated fat. What if your triglycerides are high? Polyunsaturated fats, particularly omega-3s, are really powerful at driving down triglycerides. You could even go to your doctor and say, hey, my triglycerides are high, I've been taking fish oil, can I get a prescription grade for fish oil? I take two grams of EPA a day and one gram of DHA. I'm not telling you should do that. What I'm saying is if you want to keep all of your labs in an optimal place, talk to your doctor. You're going to figure out the right dosage by trial and error and then constantly going back and always reviewing your labs, in my opinion, at least twice a year. Long term, no macronutrient should represent less than 10% of your total calories. That's all forms of fat or greater than 50% of total calories. And that's long-term. Short-term, you can try things like ketosis or a low-fat diet. I would not advise you to do that, but your body won't fall apart. But long-term, all three of those forms of fat that we talked about that are important, saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, they should at least be 10% of your daily calories. And most nutritionists would tell you 20 to 35% of your calories should be coming from those fat sources that we talked about today. In my diet, 25% of my calories come from fat. Again, I don't specifically track how many carbs and how many fats I do every day. I don't get obsessive about it. From time to time, I look and make sure that everything's staying in homeostasis. You want to make sure, for the reasons that we talked about, that you're getting adequate fat. So as an example, you're eating 2,400 calories a day, and you wanted to make sure that 25% of those calories were fat. That means that 600 of those calories were fat. And of this, this is very important to understand, of those 600 calories, one third of them should be saturated fat, meaning 200 calories. The other 400 should be coming from the monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fat. And how obsessive you get about this really depends again, where are your hormones at? Where are your lipids at? Because like I told you, I don't track macros every day because I'm one on TRT, I'm very open about it. So I don't have to worry about the hormone aspect. I'm constantly seeing a concierge doctor and two, constantly seeing a concierge doctor and my lipids are phenomenal. Those health markers that we talked about, apolipid proteins and the low density lipoprotein, they're always on point. So if you do not have an issue with your lipids, you do not have an issue with your hormones, I would suggest that you don't get obsessive about these things, but make sure that you're keeping up on your labs and make sure that everything's headed in the right direction. And if you have a problem, then you want to start getting more granular about exactly how the breakdown of fats are in your diet. Guys, I really love shooting these videos. Uh, I love shooting all things protein or everything you need to know about protein, everything you need to know about carbohydrates. I really enjoy them. I love YouTube as a whole. 
Uh, starting in June, we're gonna be releasing uh, more than one YouTube a week. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the growth we're seeing on this channel. Uh, my Instagram is where the majority of my followers are. I think I'm at like 260,000 followers on Instagram, which is crazy. I started this thing like three years ago uh, this summer. It'll be three years in summer. So um, just thank you so much. Um, appreciate all the kind words. Appreciate all the subscribes, all the likes. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And we are just going to keep out putting out amazing content, helping people get in the best shape of their life. If you don't know, you can go to jacobzima.com. That is what I do full time. I am a coach. Uh, I shoot content and I coach people into getting in the best shape of their life. And most of my clientele are executive level clients, people who have real lives with real demands. They have kids and they need help getting in shape from somebody who's not 20 years old, whose only thing they have to do is like go to the gym and look incredible. So thanks for tuning in guys. And again, I love shooting this content. So thanks for watching.